hello, and <laughs> right out the gate. Couldn't even get past one word. Hello and welcome to this online worship service put together by Rincon Congregational United Church of Christ. My name is Seth Wispelway. I use he and him pronouns, and I'm the interim pastor here at Rincon. This service is put together technically for August 16, 2020, though whenever you're watching it, however you found us, and whoever you are, welcome. Wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. And we want you to feel safe, to pray, reflect, weep, vent, hope, and move into what comes next in life-giving ways. Whether LGBTQIA, all abilities, black, brown, white, or a little bit of each, man, woman, or a bit of both, older, younger, or a bit of both. Welcome to you. We're so glad you found us. It's my prayer that this is a time to pause and take stock of how you're doing. We're living through something. It's okay to be okay, and it is okay to not be okay. We hold that with you. We want relief. Here in Tucson, we want relief from ongoing punishing summer heat that regularly, every day, has been in the triple digits. And we pray for monsoons here, but also in this country where so much fear, death, and uncertainty surrounds us all. It is stressful and it is trying. Take a moment now to pause and worship with us and acknowledge the story we're all a part of. Before we move fully into today's service, I want to acknowledge a story that we're a part of here in Tucson, which is that even online, we are on the occupied lands of the Tohono O'odham Nation and its people who have stewarded them for generations. We acknowledge this regularly as a prayerful posture and a bare minimum that our re-understanding of the history, story, and needs of this place we call home can be reimagined in radical new ways so that reparations and reuse can be made known in this place. Will you now stand in spirit, stand in body as you want and are able for our call to worship? Maker of our days, you created us, each of us, unique beings with differing strengths and weaknesses. Help us not only to use our strengths to assist others, but also to allow others to use their strengths to meet our weaknesses. Restorer of our souls, you have seen the parched places we have made in our lives, along with the devastation thrust upon us by the action or inaction of others. Meet us in the places of our deepest pain so that our facades of self-sufficiency might fall away and we might be drawn into right relationship with you and one another. Breath of our lives, without you we are but a mound of clay. Fill us with your presence today. Invigorate our worship. Set us on fire so that others might be drawn into your light and nurtured by the warmth of your loving care. Welcome to you all.
when searching just confounds us with false hopes everywhere, when lives are starved for meaning and destiny is bare, we are called to follow Jesus and let God's healing where we acknowledge the ways in which we are alienated from God and from each other and find renewed purpose to bind ourselves in the holy work of making things new and loving for all. Read along with the words as they appear on your screen. For ignoring the vision breathed by the living spirit, churning deep within our souls. God have mercy, God have mercy, have mercy upon us. For refusing to look at the vision, alive within those who look or act or sound different from us. God have mercy, God have mercy have mercy upon us. For choosing familiarity, ease and comfort, rather than risking the opportunities afforded in the vision. God have mercy, God have mercy, have mercy upon us. If your heart is heavy with fear, with worry, with sorrow, come to this place and find strength. As you long for community in a world that is torn apart, come to this place and find love. Come, people of God, and in this place, in this moment, find peace, hope, strength, and love as we worship and pray together. You are beloved. Amen.
Our guiding scripture today comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. And I invite you now to hear how these sacred texts speak to us even now. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to God, to love the name of the Lord, and to be God's servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Amen. Be without fear in the face of your enemies. Be brave and upright that God may love thee. Speak the truth always, even if it leads to your death. Safeguard the helpless and do no wrong. That is your oath. Did that sound a little bit like some additional verses from Isaiah? Sounds like it, I think, but they're not. Those lines are from a movie that came out in 2005 in some form called Kingdom of Heaven by Ridley Scott. And I say some form because the version that came out in theaters in 2005 for this big sweeping sword and sandals epic taking place during the Second Crusades of the Middle Ages was just over two hours long. And I remember seeing it in the theaters and frankly being like, eh, I've seen this kind of thing before and honestly it doesn't make too much sense and they're packing a lot in and something's kind of off. And that was a correct response because it turns out that the movie studio had cut the movie up that Ridley Scott had planned into an almost unrecognizable story from what was originally shot on film and designed for audiences. Whole characters and plot arcs were left in the dustbin uh, to put the focus on action and, and other things. It's something that happens frequently in Hollywood, but happened especially to Kingdom of Heaven. And I was re-watching Kingdom of Heaven recently but the movie that was intended and happens to be one of my favorites. This version, which is called the Roadshow Director's Cut, is three hours and 15 minutes, which is a whole different movie. There's an intermission um, built in. And I highly recommend it. It is rated R uh, for, as you can imagine, crusading violence. Uh, they show what swords do to people. But what is extra fascinating about this film are the politics and pastoral care taken to try to understand what does it mean to be called to God's holy mount in Jerusalem, in the movie's case, and in Isaiah's case. But in our ongoing everyday lives, what does it mean to summit to the mountaintop, as Dr. Martin Luther King spoke about. Well, we have a vision today in our Isaiah verses, and we have a pretty beautiful vision in Kingdom of Heaven, where during the Second Crusades, the Christians have been in charge of Jerusalem for about a hundred years after taking it brutally from the Muslims. And the king, though, has a 
piece, it's a somewhat uneasy piece, but a piece with Salah Hadin and the Muslims of the region, people living together in harmony, giving each other permission to pray to the God they know as one and love. Now, of course, there are zealots, in this case, the Knights Templar especially, who believe there is only one way, this fundamentalist, nationalistic way, who are trying to provoke war, trying to go outside the walls to ensure that no one else comes inside the walls. And there's another quote I want to read you from one night to another. When our protagonist of the story, Balian, is trying to figure out how this harmony is possible and whether it can maintain. This other night, played by David Thewlis, says, I put no stock in religion. By the word religion, I have seen the lunacy of fanatics of every denomination be called the will of God. Holiness is in right action and courage on behalf of those who cannot defend themselves. And it's on behalf of goodness. What God desires, and then he points to Balian, what God desires is here and here. And what you decide to do every day, whether you will be that good person walking in God's visions and dreams in the kingdom of heaven, whether you do that or not. Sounds like our scripture today, our brief scripture. And like a lot of our scripture and what we've been exploring these past few weeks especially, it's good to have the director's cut, that is the context through which we are reading and hearing the word of God through the prophet Isaiah. It helps to have that intended version for us now so that we can fully appreciate today. What does it mean to live and maintain justice as God desires? Well, I'm gonna say just a couple things. What's really fascinating is in Isaiah 56, we see the start of a third section in Isaiah. All biblical scholars know and agree that actually the book of Isaiah, which is 66 chapters long for us, is actually comprised of three different periods and writers maintaining a similar through line and story. The first Isaiah is chapters 1 through 39. The second is chapters 40 to 55. And the third starts with 56, verse 1, which we did today. Now, why do I tell you this? Well, Isaiah 56, the start of third Isaiah, is an oracle promising universal, universal salvation to come. Now, previously... In Isaiah, historically, chapters 34 to 55 especially, some of 1st Isaiah and all of 2nd Isaiah, salvation for the Israelites was going to be dependent, worldly salvation was going to be dependent on Cyrus II of Persia coming to liberate Israel from the, Babylon, the brutal Babylonian captivity so that they could be restored to their homelands of yesteryear. Well, now in 3rd Isaiah, chapter 56, that liberation has been accomplished. It's happened. But salvation hasn't yet. And by salvation, the writer means, and I mean, restoration, redemption, and reparations, the fullness of the goodness that everyone expected hasn't quite come to bear at the worldly level. And so Isaiah, third Isaiah, is saying look to God to bring these redemptions and reparations and restorations. 
a worldly leader sweeping through is not going to accomplish the rest you need and the goodness we all want, the monsoons. No, we have to look to God for that. And what does God say? God invites us into that work to make all things new. Little sidebar analogy. We are living through a dark time with a president in the United States with authoritarian, totalitarian and neo-fascist tendencies, as well as just a whole lot of ugliness and violence perpetrated by this person, by the current occupant of the White House and his administration. We, and most of us here at Rincon are pretty comfortably situated white folks, are not going to be liberated by voting the right way on November 3rd. That's assuming we have a free and fair election. But it's important to draw this analogy. Cyrus II might prevail but that is not liberation and that is not salvation because too many of our neighbors, our human siblings, our kin, many in our own congregation are still threatened daily and it won't be washed away by one election or one other old white man. Those threats to their human belovedness at policy levels, at bodily levels. We are called to maintain justice. We are the ones looking to God who make a new way possible. So who, whoever is occupying the White House, our house, our tax dollars, we are called to bang on the gates till they are open to all. Now the prophet does promise that God will accomplish restoration and reparations, but suggests that this deliverance comes alongside people acting righteously and in just ways to be the hands and feet of Jesus, the hearts and hands in action, as we say at Rincon. We are called to pray with our feet, we are called to rest and keep Sabbath, the day we make this worship services for holy, rest in who God is for us. God is saying, I'm here to restore you. I'm here to bring monsoons. But we're also called to remember our role. When that promise of God comes to us, how do we respond? Repentance we are called to say, is a turning around. If repentance means nothing, then repentance means nothing. We are called to bear fruits worthy of repentance. So as we said in our call to worship today, if you are feeling love to a position of strength through your resources or your time or your money, God is calling you to take a leap of faith, to be a good Samaritan, to sow hospitality in Rincon and in Tucson. And if right now you're almost too tired to even watch this and you're hurt and you're scared and you need, let us know. Let your friends know. We will maintain justice together, beloved. God wills it which is a common battle cry in kingdom of heaven. But this we know, God wills it. And this vision from our verses today, God who gathers, God who brings everyone into the house of prayer, this universalizing open door, open and affirming posture, this one we want to get right at Rincon. This is the vision of the kingdom of heaven 
for some protagonists in Kingdom of Heaven. And it's definitely our vision here today. Come in strength, come in weakness, come to be held, come to give, come to receive. <sighs> Time has lost a lot of meaning here. So once you've done all those things and want some rest and don't mind a three and a half hour sword and sandals epic, come to watch that too. You've got time probably. <laughs> Amen, beloved. Amen. Well, hello again, y'all. It turns out I kind of put some of what I was going to say in this offertory call into my sermon. So I'm just going to say thank you for taking the time to consider how you might be able to sow into our ongoing ministries, which are also ministries that are ongoing into our community and our neighborhood and our city, our wider church and world. Being in an interim time requires a leap of faith that the story we're sowing into is worth the giving. I'm here to prayerfully offer up that you may do so if you're able and as you're called with a clear conscience that you are part of the prophet's call because some exciting things are afoot in Rincon being honest with itself, in Rincon expanding what's possible on our campus to be announced more publicly later in this kind of forum. So anyway, in times of plenty and want, God does provide for our deepest needs. Give generously out of the abundance of God's blessing to you so that in these challenging times, God's work might continue in serving your deepest needs, if that's you. Our offering will now be taken. 
I'll give you some time to go to rinconucc.org. You can click on donate. And I thank you so much. We sing for those whose song is silent, whose hidden hurt no tune could bear. Children whose innocence of loving has long since gone beyond repair. God who conceived and gave us birth Listen for those who've lost their worth. We sing for those whose lives were mangled when friendship turned to vile abuse. As those they trusted traded kindness for cruelty beyond excuse. God, in whose image all were made, feel for the ones who've been betrayed. We sing for those who bear within them scars in the body, mind, and soul, fears from the past and for tomorrow. Yearnings that they might yet behold. God, who in Christ was touched by pain, make your hurt children whole again. We sing that though believing people, lives may be hallowed and made good. And ask that God in every victim shall see faith, hope, and love renewed. This is our prayer, this is our song. provider. We dedicate to your service our lives and these offerings. From your blessing and our labor, work in us and through us to extend your love and care here and around the world. Amen. i 
land It's clear to all where we will stand For all who are abused by power We make your way for justice To the one making way Gloria, oh Gloria For peace for all around the world Gloria, oh Gloria, to the one making way. We have been new immigrants, you made way for home. We have been a people crossing borders in Shalom. History has made us wise, so as we set ahead our eyes, for all who are new immigrants, we make your way for home, to the one making way, Gloria, oh Gloria, for peace for all around the world. Gloria, oh Gloria, to the one making way. It's me again. Thank you so much for taking the time, beloved. I hope it was time that gave you a little brain and soul breath to remember you are beloved, that God's got you that God's got us, and we've got each other. If it doesn't feel that way, reach out. We'll get there. And now I bless you forward into this week, into what may come, that you might feel the hands and feet of Jesus alongside you and recognize that you are that person too. When you embrace the belovedness that is yours since you were born today and to come. There lies the port, the vessel puffs her sail. There gloom the dark broad seas my mariners, souls that have toiled and wrought and thought with me, that ever with a frolic welcome took the thunder and the sunshine and opposed free hearts, free foreheads, you and I are old. Old age hath yet his honor and his toil. Death closes all, but something ere the end some work of noble note may yet be done, not unbecoming people that strove with gods. The lights begin to twinkle from the rocks, the long day wanes, the slow moon climbs, the deep moans round with many voices. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world push off, and sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrows for my purpose, holds to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles who we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Amen.
the one who made King Way by love they were formed in early wilderness with blee 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 standing in circles surrounded oh all holy welcome to the online the online for <sighs> serenity now. To this online worship, <laughs> I'm putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Okay, that's an error, error, error. Okay, we want to do that. No, we don't want to do that. And we acknowledge this weekly at a bare minimum. Oh, 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 too much, too much, too much. No, oh, it's a little, 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 little. To this online. <laughs> we have been a people freed and claimed by them. And I'm so glad. You found us. Wrong order. As well as the blah blah blah. God in trust. God. Restorer of our souls, you have seen the parched places we have made in our lives, along with the devastation thrust upon. For those who aren't from Tucson, <laughs> I started laughing at parched places because, holy cow, is this a summer? Walk in compassion and mercy by your love.